Hello, hello. Welcome to the third day. I'm going to run out of fingers after a while. I guess I use my fingers and toes. Uh, but welcome to the third day of prayer and fasting. Like I said earlier, there's we are, this isn't anything new to us. We've been doing prayer and fasting services ever since God told me to do them and for... 1985 I was getting ready to go to Africa for the first time I've been there twice and uh, he said just take a time off of prayer and fasting and then he said do that every year and so we're doing it every year sometimes we start early for us uh, it's because uh, we usually was primarily just in September and then uh, start a couple of weeks early so that's what we did and sometimes we went a couple of weeks past September into October so uh, God's the one that's the ball say man I'm just the follower and keeping keeping up with everything he's doing and uh, so but we're going to go right in the Bible the word of God is is the great separator the word of God is what we have that God's given us he's written it down so we'll know his will on how to pray and how to fast and everything else so get all the religiosity out of what you think <laughs> amen and uh, that's what bogs us down let's just find out what the Bible actually teaches amen so we're going to talk about today uh, about prayer and fasting and what's God's plan see uh, you know I got a friend and she said that's what she prays all the time God what's your plan what's your plan what's your plan I said well you can really just look up in the Bible and see what God's plan is <laughs> amen so let's look up in here in Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 that's Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, so we know the Bible. You don't have to wonder uh, what God's doing. He's the same. He's the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's the same as the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Holy Ghost is the same yesterday today and forever so whatever the God was doing in the New Testament and the book of Acts and through the Bible he's doing the same thing today same way with same way with Jesus same way with God amen so let's find out how he is okay what is he doing well in Acts 10 if you have a Bible Acts 10 and verse 38. Acts 10. Give you time to turn there. Acts 10 and verse 38. And it says, this is Acts 10 verse 38. We quote a lot of these things, but sometimes it's good just take your time, read them, and go through them, look at them, and it helps you. Acts 10 and 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. See, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, all three of them are in there, so they're the same, okay? They're the same. We read over there in, in Hebrews just a while ago. If you want to go back and rewind the video. And he it says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, well, this would be before Hebrews. So how was he before? How was the Holy Ghost before? How was God before? How was Jesus before Hebrews? Okay, so let's read it. How God, there's one, anointed Jesus, there's two, of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, okay, and with power. So he, he God put anointing on Jesus, okay, to do something. 
with power who went about doing good. So what's God doing today? Same thing He's doing in Acts. Good. What's Jesus doing today? Same thing He's doing in the book of Acts. Good. So what's Jesus, uh, what's the Holy Ghost doing today? Same thing He's doing in the book of Acts. Good. Now what was the good that they did? All three of them working together. And healing. Healing's good. All who all but you no all who were oppressed so so God's healing physical and God's healing mental see that oppressed of the devil for God is with him you got that so anything bad devil anything oppressing devil that's not God we just read it right there. How God anointed Jesus, God, Jesus, uh, the, with the Holy Ghost, who went, went with power, authority, who went about doing good, 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 and healing all. That's every area of life that are oppressed of the devil. So oppression comes from the devil, and sickness and disease comes from the devil. We just read it right there. Okay, so now turn over to John. We're going backwards today, starting in Hebrews and going backwards, lay a foundation. But you know God always knows best. Hebrews, excuse me, the book of John 10 and 10. Chapter 10. If you got a Bible or a device, give you a little bit of time to look it up. St. John, chapter 10. In verse 10, the thief. Now we just read over there that God's a giver of life. God's a giver of healing. God's a giver of being set free from sickness and disease. Acts 10:38, And God's a giver of being set free from the oppression of the devil. Okay, so we know God's not a thief then. You see that? So uh, the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy so anything it has to do with killing stealing or destroying is not God well why do you got that because we've already read references saying the nature of God who is God you see that so let's go a little bit deeper the thief comes the devil comes to steal kill destroy but I've come who's talking here Jesus red letter See, even back when the in the Bible days, this is the Bible days now, but when they was when Jesus was walking the earth, there still was an enemy there, and the enemy was still it was still telling people that God is the one that kills, steals, and destroys. Even Jesus had to make corrections in his life and ministry, walking around teaching people. Hey, God's not the one killing, stealing, and destroying. It's a thief. It's the devil. See that? So get that straight. But I've come, Jesus is talking here, that you would have life and have it more abundant life. One version says uh, a more richer life. So it's not God's plan for you to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Dear Lord Jesus. No, 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 no. The scriptures don't verify that. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper. 11. I am, Jesus, is a good shepherd. See? And a good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Well, that's what he did. He got physically raised from the dead. So he's a good shepherd. He's good. He's good. Anything trying to oppress you, you can just say, no, that's not right, because God's good. She, she can go to sleep at night and just think, God's good. God is good. And you drop off to sleep. So you don't be thinking about all the busyness of the day. That'll keep you up. <laughs> Amen. Think about, yeah, God's good. That's right. God is good. Isn't he good? Now, and then think about this. 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the life of Jesus when he physically walked on the earth. Did Jesus ever one time make somebody sick? No. Did Jesus one time ever oppress somebody? No. Did Jesus one time ever tell somebody, well, I can't do anything for you because, you know, God's punishing you? No. Not one time. So these folks that are trying to represent God, saying that God's punishing them, trying to teach them a lesson and he can't trust everybody with sickness and disease, but he can trust you. That's why he put it on you. Those people are misinformed because that's not what the Bible teaches. Okay? So, now, we're in the New Testament. We win all the fulfillment of Jesus. So now we have authority. We do. We have authority that nothing shall by any means hurt us. So we also use our God-given authority to help other folks. Maybe they don't know yet. See, if people was under old, under old uh, religious teaching, uh, then we would have to help them. So what do you help them? Well, you give them the Word, and sometimes they won't even listen to the Word, so what do you do? Well, you pray Ephesians, the first chapter, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ would give unto them, and you just say whoever the them is. The spirit of wisdom, the revelation knowledge of Jesus, that the eyes of their understanding and being enlightened, they know what the hope of their calling is, an exceedingly great power that works on the inside of them. That's what you'd pray for them. Ephesians the first chapter, verse 16, 17, 18, 19, down through there. Okay? So, now our theme text for this month, that we're, we got a foundation that we know God's not the oppressor. We already read that. Jesus isn't the oppressor, Acts 10, 38. The Holy Ghost is not the oppressor. They're the healer. They're the setter free from depression. Okay? So, now, I know we're started in the New Testament, but we're working our way to our, our prayer theme. Look in Isaiah, if you have a Bible, Isaiah 58, in verse 6. It says, This is the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke of bondage. Okay, so that's what that's what Jesus is having us do, and He's having us pray for three levels of government. And thanks for all the good comments people's been giving us. Uh, that they said yes, I'm praying for those three levels of government. I'm joining up uh, with you. So let's uh, let's look at this. Okay, so we're going to pray this. We already know that's what Jesus did too. We already read scriptures. We already went back. If that's not solidified and you got revelation of it yet, go back and listen to the video. One guy said he listened to the vid a video for three months. Shoot, I've got videos and stuff that I've listened for years. Why? Because it just keeps feeding your spirit. See, faith always feeds your spirit. Okay, so we right now in Jesus' name, we have authority. We have authority over wickedness. We have authority over heavy burdens. We have authority over oppression. And we have authority over every yoke. So we break those off of people in Jesus' name, right now in the name of Jesus, and that they're free in three areas. Our local government, no more wrong decisions, only right decisions. Praise God. And the oppressive spirits uh, trying to get them to make the wrong decisions are bound and gagged in Jesus' name. Over our state, no more wrong decisions, only right decisions. And any kind of a spirits is trying to, oppressive spirits, to bind up stuff 
and oppressed stuff, we bind and gag that in Jesus' name. The third one, the U.S. government. Over, we, <coughs> we, we take authority over the authorities of the U.S. government. Washington DC and we say no more wrong decisions we bind and gag wrong decisions in Jesus name that they start making right decisions we bind and gag the strong man that tries to rule through people so we don't wrestle against people we wrestle against flesh and bone not flesh and bone see we don't do that either it's against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. Read the book of Ephesians. I read the book of Ephesians uh, not every day. I mean, I read it every day over a thousand times. I didn't do it in one setting. I read it a few times. And it took a while. And I'm still reading it. I'm still quoting it. I'm still going over it. Probably a few thousand, just to be honest about it. But it gives you revelation knowledge when you do that. Things start changing. The words of the Bible come off of the Bible and go inside of you. So I, I just camped out and lived in the book of Ephesians. I read it over a thousand times straight through. It don't take very long to read it, and I'm not a fast reader. But I'm still reading it. And so it's, uh, I'm sure I've read it probably over a few thousand, just be up front about it. So that's what we're doing. We're loosening the bonds of wickedness, letting the oppressed go free, and breaking every yoke. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. And we're going to pray. Uh, we're going to pray for you that you're free. You walk even in financial freedom. And this is Financial Freedom Month. Man, you want to have a financial freedom victory in your life? Get involved this month. And uh, the Lord showed us to, you know, double up. This is a double up month. Whatever you normally give, if you normally give a dollar, give two dollars. Amen. Uh, whatever you normally give. If you don't normally give nothing, just double zero and come on because you need the videos. Amen. If he's going to give a million dollars, give two million. Amen. Whatever you is going to give. Just give it. You can give it down below uh, PayPal, or you, if you want, you can request the address, and we'll give you the address, and uh, however you want to do it. So we just pray for you in Jesus' name. That you have a breakthrough, even in your finances. See, when you give uh, significant seeds, when you when you give. It's like, a, it's like a, a hammer hitting a dam. Boom, boom, boom. Well, you get a big enough hammer to hit that dam, that dam of blessings is going to break loose, brother and sister. <laughs> you know, you're going to turn your trickle into a golly washer. Amen. And that helps us get the gospel out in a greater way. If you want to help us get the gospel out in a greater way, well, that's one way that you can do it. That's the way you can do it, through giving. You want to hook up with us? Become a partner. Uh, you can become a partner of any amount. Amen. So, amen. So, sow your seed today, and you'll see the blessing of God increase. We've been having a wonderful testimonies. This is just our third day, and uh, we had a guy that woke up in back pain, and he just we just we prayed that uh, he'd got a good job he hadn't had one for a while and he got a good job the one he wanted his dream job you know and of course the enemy's not going to lay down and play dead so he just started saying Isaiah 53 5 he got up he got cleaned up he went ahead and went to work and he was in pain but he just kept saying, Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes I'm healed. Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes I'm healed. So he went to work, started his work day. 
and uh, he worked about 12 hour shifts and this was the beginning of the day and uh, he just he had about a 15 minute time there so he just took that time he just hung out with God and, and was saying Isaiah 53 5 for about 15 minutes and he said God is my witness of course he's given the glory to God uh, his God is my witness that lifted off of him and he's pain free now the enemy gonna try to come back but he can just do Nahum 1 9 this affliction shall not arise a second time take authority over the devil and broke bust and disgusted him instead of you amen so be free today amen we'll see you tomorrow it'll be our fourth teaching and uh, every every day it just builds the anointing builds Romans 10 17 faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God and so uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, purpose of fasting and uh, this is the purpose of fasting to loose the bonds of wickedness let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke and see it uh, fasting doesn't make you more powerful you know fasting is not where the power is at that's just an obedience that you do for God so but faith is where the power is at so we're speaking faith over this and adding and adding victory to it in Jesus name you be blessed today remember down below have a great one you'll enjoy everything and it'll help us get the gospel out in a greater way and God will take your seed that you sow and multiply it and flood it back to you in Jesus name amen